Um, so you still want me to not play the banner? Oh, uh, no, you can play the banner. Okay. Since he changed it up. Stand by. See? Card. My cue. He's accused of taking three lives. Now he's behind bars. Tonight, new details in our Monta Had Nots Arrest. Plus, progress bringing problems in Borgard Parish. Some residents say the big trucks are ruining roads. And if you donate to the Red Cross, there's Stand a high-tech approach C. to make sure your money does more to help. 7 News at 6 starts now. Go see. Now, in high definition, by on cam. sponsored by the son of Lake Charles. This is 7 News at 6. Mike Hume. Good evening. The man Link Charles police called one of the most dangerous men in America is I mean, behind bars bands. tonight, accused of killing three people. 20-year-old Jaminski and RV, 23-year-old we'll David go to Galmore, and 20-year-old Fitzgerald Guillory were shot and killed out. in a North Lake Charles Take Park Wednesday night. KPLC's Olivia Vidal joins us now with go more swoosh. on the capture of the accused killer. Mike, Cynthia Lake Charles police say the arrest was made early this morning between midnight and 1 a.m. A Kakashi Parish Sheriff's Video's deputy up. spotted the vehicle 18-year-old Armanta Hadnot was last seen in. That's a 2001 a dark green two. Buick Century. The deputy issued a traffic stop, but Armanta kept driving. Eventually catching up to him, Armanta crashed into a parked vehicle on the 1600 block of Gifford Street. Oh, Armanta fled on foot, and Lake Charles camp. police and canine units arrived to the location for the search. Lake Charles police say Armanta surrendered without incidents once he noticed the officer was with a canine. This is still an active still investigation, and city police are still searching for one more suspect involved. And two. Yeah, re reference to the, the shooting on McMillan This is 31 Park. seconds. Uh, Give us a call as the LQ will come straight back to the flash. Uh, unfortunately, I don't have any information for you on that. At, at this point, it's, it's still being heavily investigated. Uh, if anyone in the public has any information, they can call 491-1311. They can ask for any one of the three lead investigators. Uh, that would be Detective Franklin Fondell, Ten. Detective Lee McCullough and Detective Colby Thompson. If they have any information at all, anything that, that Five, they think may help the department by. in locating these suspects, please feel free to give us a call. Mike Hume. Hermano was booked into the Calcasieu Correctional Center, Center and charged with three counts of first degree murder with no bond, three counts of attempted first degree murder with $200,000 for each count, six counts of armed robbery, $50,000 for each count, and six counts of armed robbery and with a firearm at $75,000 for each count. We'll have more Same information Cynthia. on this arrest tonight on Nutcast. Cynthia? Oh, thanks, Olivia. A bar of high school clear. student Stand was arrested after a so-called hit list was found at the school. 18-year-old Patrick Granger faces a terrorizing charge tonight. The list contained the names of several students We're go and faculty to a couple members. We'll Calcasie eventually Sheriff come back investigators tell Seven News that Granger claims the list was a prank and they have not found that Granger had any intent to carry out any violent acts. But investigators say the list was intentionally left so it could be found, which caused alarm and disruption at the school and violated the state's law on terrorizing. Next full screen. A Moss Bluff woman is accused of hitting a child in the face with a hairbrush. The Calcasieu Parish Sheriff's Office arrested 39-year-old Belinda Blessing and charged her with cruelty to a juvenile. So next the arrest screen. was made after investigators got a tip from the child's school. Full screen. Investigators say she got nearly 30,000 prescription pills One illegally. Calcasieu Sheriff deputies say 43-year-old Sherry Logan of Iowa worked at a local doctor's office and used blank prescriptions to get the drugs. And investigators say this had been going on so since 2001. Screen. Logan faces more than 500 charges. Her bond was set at $30,000. Next full screen. A sulfur man was jailed Lots after Calcasieu Sheriff investigators say he had sexual yep. contact with. 13-year-old girl, 18-year-old Stephen Maddox was jailed on Take a $15,000 bond. She's Voters approved cam. the constitutional amendment last year, making gun ownership a fundamental right in Louisiana. Yep. 
Now some state laws restricting guns are being challenged. A judge in New Orleans finds the law prohibiting certain convicted felons from carrying concealed weapons is unconstitutional. District Attorney Tom DeRosier disagrees and hopes the state Supreme Court will too. And three. If the Supreme Court would Boost. line up with that with that ruling. Twenty seconds. A good thing Orleans, is the out queue. We'll have more uh, BO. Come, we have uh, no, we won't. We'll come straight back. Keep them all answer Keenan. In the there. meantime, it would Ten not seconds. be a violation of Louisiana law for a convicted felon Five. to carry a firearm. Standard by. Now, that is not a good thing. My cue. DeRosier says he and the New Orleans King. DA tried to tell lawmakers what would happen. DeRosier says now district attorneys across the state are left to clean up the mess. The list is out and neither Lake Charles Regional nor the FAA's list of 149 air traffic control towers slated for closure under sequestration cuts. Video's but up. the list just contains contract towers. We'll We're come back the to FAA three and a two. still close the air tower at Lake Charles Regional weather. Airport. Executive Director Heath Allen told 7 News this afternoon that cutbacks may still come, but the FAA hadn't gotten that far in their resources yet. However, the air traffic control tower at Chinook International Airport has been saved from sequestration cuts. And three is that? Well, it's Stand warm and windy today, but will Cedric? that trend last through the weekend? Meteorologist Cedric Haynes is in for Wade Hampton tonight. That's right, Cynthia. You one, hit that one right one on the head up. there. We had warm, windy conditions, and the winds helped make it even warmer. Check out the high temperatures today across up. the area. Lower 80s across all of southwest Louisiana. It felt very nice out we'll there. We'll come back to and some three of that and nice two, then we'll go to Keith on Cynthia for, for at least a little while longer. Check out the numbers right now. Very nice. 79 degrees in Derrida. 75 in Lake nice. Charles and 77 degrees in Lafayette. And yeah, you can see those winds are definitely still up out of the south, anywhere between 10 and 15 miles per hour all across southwest Louisiana. And I expect those to slowly calm this evening. Now, the good news is all the rain is well to our north and east right now. But if you look back to the west, we've got some more energy beginning to organize now. And that's what we're going to continue to keep our eyes out on for the possibility of that energy moving in and producing some strong storms on Saturday. And the Storm Prediction Center has all of southwest Louisiana in a slight risk for seeing some severe weather coming up for us as we go throughout your Saturday Stand afternoon. Now, in just a few minutes, Cynthia, we're going to break all of this three down for you, take you Stand hour by hour, let you know what you can expect for your Saturday. Some cooler weather Sunday and much cooler for the next week. We'll talk all about it in just a few minutes. All right. Thanks a lot, Here's Cedric. Two. Economic Stand development by, and new uh, business are solved by Stand most communities. But in Borgard Parish, some residents want to prevent progress from destroying their roads. KPLC's Teresa Schmidt explains. Some too. Former police chair George Feltman, maybe 87 89 years old, but it we'll has some stopped for the him from being we'll involved in what's three, going on in his community. Right now, he's concerned that truck uh, traffic zoom out on from one. two yeah, different plants is causing dust and destroying residential roads. Trucks have no. In. Designated <laughs> route. They can go right through the residential <laughs> area and they're destroying roads that are not designed to carry heavy truck traffic. Feltman welcomes economic development but says it's the police's responsibility to make sure the roads are kept up and you can already see potholes forming. When it's dry, it'll cause dust. When it's wet, it'll cause mud and. One minute. It will cause the uh, roads to be not be able to handle the regular vehicle traffic. Feltman is also concerned the situation so will cute. hurt homeowners' <laughs> property values. He doesn't just complain, he's come oh. up with an alternate route for trucks that he says oh. would save the roads near homes. We're not against the truckers. We have an option for them. We have a truck route 30. For them. The police sure is the governing body of this parish. And they should do so. However, the governing body has a boss. The boss is the taxpayers of this parish. The taxpayers, when they go to vote and when they pay their taxes, they're the boss of this thing. Fifteen. So this is why I want we want selection right now. Parish officials tell me how the say the police are is examining various possibilities and looking for funding that may help with road improvement. Five. As your service in Beauregard Seven. Parish, Teresa Schmidt, KPLC 7 News. And Mikey Cynthia. The issue is expected to be We're discussed wipe by video police jurors three the road and bridge the break. meeting at 4 p.m. Tuesday, April 2nd at the police jury building in Durant. Sneak in your car at Wyoming. Coming up next, stand if you donate to the red cross, there's a new high-tech approach to make sure your Go money one. does more to help. That story is 70 is at 6 and 3, 2, 1, fade take. Good block. 
15. No, I, know, I, I never stiffened the gecko. Oh, that house is going to be around as well. 10. Doesn't spell check in at me. Agreed. 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Go see. My cute. Changes in technology are fast paced, and for one agency, it could mean the difference in helping hey, those in need. The Red Cross one. is revamping the way volunteers become a part of the team. And as KPLC's Courtney Lang reports, these changes could give more of the money donated to those who need it. And one. Volunteers are what keeps the Red Cross going, and they can be in short supply. We'll come back but people over at the Red Cross in Lake Charles we'll say a, a new attitude. program could fix that. And what it basically yeah. does is Ten. take our human resources packages so. and together and put them all in one place. The program, known as Volunteer Connection, is a new system on the Red Cross website that provides a way for people to apply, list their available times, and any specialties they may have. It can activate volunteers in case of an emergency or disaster. It can help set up different shifts. Now, each chapter across the U.S. uses the same system. Volunteer Connection yeah. is a Ten. national database, so any opportunities so. that are available, any disasters, any um, needs, they can actually go and they can look at that. And then if deployment is an, uh, is an option, they can then be deployed to okay. like Sandy. Not only can it help they got nationwide, a, it's got a command it can have an impact script. right here in Louisiana. What will actually do One the minute. community is allow us to Standard respond to Standard out, keyed for the time. Because we'll have access to our volunteers much easier. Officials say an online system instead of the previous pen and paper can draw in more volunteers by shortening the turnaround. We can get them onto volunteer connection and they can uh, hopefully become a general volunteer working with us within um, a week. Those volunteers create a profile where they can check to see where the needs are. As Red Cross needs more volunteers and more of the work is done online, they say they can save money. Uh, we're looking at roughly 92 cents on every dollar that's given to the American Red Cross right now that goes into direct services. And officials say getting more resources out on the streets 15. is the goal behind the new program. Our primary uh, Ten. reason for existing is our clients, and that's where the bulk Five of seconds. the resources are. At your service in Lake Charles, Courtney Lang, KPLC 7 News. And Mike Houston, the Officials say the volunteer profiles are secure. For more information Ten. on becoming a volunteer, a video visit our website, kplctv.com. Oh, well, up, the sorry. long wait ends tomorrow. That's when the Ten. Rebuild Millennium Park will reopen. We'll come in back to three and two for and the bump of the brain. There will also be a splash park. Oh. The grand reopening and ribbon cutting for the park is this Saturday at Stand 10 a.m at the main entrance's Shea Pavilion. And three is so up. So Cedric, mm -hmm. you're on the hot seat now. we got to have good weather for mm -hmm. the uh, reopening of Millennium Park. Well, cart, that's true. And by your I'll see what I can do on that. <laughs> I tell you what, it is hot out there, so at least up. in my book. So I guess I got that part of the forecast right here. Here's some of the numbers from our weather watchers this evening. Faye and Oakdale, 77, 78, Diamond Berry and Lafayette, 79 from Wanda Bailey and Sugartown, 79 from Kent and Vinton. We've got rain on the way, at least a chance. We'll talk about it right after this. Kill is mine. And fade. Fifteen. Ten. Five. Four. Three. Two. One. Let's see. Now your pinpoint forecast with meteorologist Cedric Haynes. Like oh my goodness, I hope everyone had a chance to get outside and take a walk. Just get out there and enjoy this nice weather. It really felt like spring spring break almost. Because guess what? Next week when it's the official spring break, it's not going to feel like this at all. Sorry about that. 75 degrees, cloudy skies, a strong south-southwesterly wind. That's what's pumping in all this warmer air. Notice that dew point into the upper 60s. It's a very muggy and humid out there as well. Now look at our regional temperature map. Mid-70s, 80s on the map here, just to our south and southwest. But look to the north, 61 degrees currently in Shreveport. Jump across the border, it's 45 in Texarkana. There's some cold air just to our north, and we're under the warm influence currently here in southwest Louisiana. Check out these numbers into the mid to upper 70s area-wide. But guess what? We're going to see some changes on the way. First, some warmer air, and then we're going to see some cool air moving in as we head towards the second half of the weekend. Currently out there, we started the day with some clouds. Those clouds have moved on off towards the north and east. 
Now we're waiting for our next system to come through. That allowed us to actually see a few peaks of sunshine. Now what's going on is we have a big area, what I like to call cold air aloft. That's what's producing the snow in the northwest right now. It's a lot of cold air aloft. Remember, it's very warm down here to the south. So as this cold air moves down to the south to meet up with this warm air that we're dealing with, it's going to create showers and storms. You can see some of that activity beginning to develop now over the Four Corners region. And as that happens, there is a slight risk coming up for us tomorrow to see a slip of, of severe weather out there across most of the Gulf Coast states. But again, not everyone is going to see scattered showers and storms. I think it will be mainly more scattered out there. So let's take you hour by hour. Here's tonight, just clouds around the area, that strong breeze out there. This system will be organizing. So tomorrow morning, we'll probably wake up with some clouds. Can't rule out an isolated streamer shower, but I think most of us will remain on the dry side. And as we go throughout the afternoon hours, you're going to see showers and storms beginning to develop. They're going to be scattered, though, so some scattered showers and storms developing. And if some of these do develop and get going and pop up, they could be on the strong to severe side. But again, not everyone is going to see this, and this is not going to be a widespread event. But there are, could be some showers and thunderstorms, and some of those could be on the strong to severe side. Now, Sunday, we get on the back side of this low pressure. That means northern winds bringing down that cooler, drier air. So we'll start today with some clouds, maybe an isolated shower. But the winds pick up. It's going to be very windy on Sunday. But as this low pressure system moves on off to our north and east and produces a big storm to the north and east, it's going to drag down some cooler air. So it will be turning cooler on Sunday and much cooler as we head towards next week. Hour by hour on our rain chances, though, you can see tomorrow morning we should mainly be dry, just clouds across the area. The afternoon hours is when we can see some of these pop-up storms, but again, you know, it's going to be, be very nice. scattered, and not everyone is going to see all these showers and storms in the rain chances. And then Sunday, the cool air moves in. So for your Saturday, yeah, if you do see a severe me, storm so develop, wind, hail, sure and lightning will be your Last main threat. Thought, the dance, tornado threat is pretty low. Dancing so class for night, cloudy and warm. A stronger storm or two on your Saturday and, afternoon. Uh, 76 for that high temperature. Yeah, well, I mean, it's basic math, so I kind of got it. It's on And then cooler on your Sunday. Much then, cooler next I week. Hey, the officials start a spring break Camera's week clear. around here, and we're talking Stand about thirties all. returning to Southwest Louisiana. So, hey, I tell you what, so, hey. we get to stick around here, Stand get ready for a winter-like feel to the forecast. Now, if you're heading down cam. towards South Stand or one Gulf center. Coast, Mexico, or something, it'll be spring-like, but not here for spring break. Oh, so we're gonna finish. enjoy it. At hey, is it? That's right. <laughs> oh, we got spring break <laughs> and March Madness. All that around. Somebody cue the one. Continues. All that wound up in the one, and I don't know. If one is that? Um, March Madness feels too good right now. If you break away, this is Mike. Yes, this is Mike. Today might have sunk it, but in the midst of the madness, there's football. Maybe Good he's holding up. their first scrimmage today. See how the Cowboys Stand did. Stand by camera three. Next Go sports. three. Three is up in three, two, one. Fade and take it. Yeah, um, when you have all their mics open, it's louder. Ten. Five, four, three, two. One, go see. Now, seven Stand sports with him. Seth Lewis. Local first. Mike Hume, Spring please. football is a chance to do a lot of things. Get younger players reps, figure out position battles, and to determine your hey, depth going into next season. Things McNeese football looked to find out in their first scrimmage. Videos hey, up. Coach Matt Vietor looking on as his Cowboys battle. And as two. the first team goes Come. out there, Cody Stroud is going to find Ernest Celesty, and no one is going to catch him. He goes... 50 yards Aww. for the score, but in a scrimmage, no score is kept. And then in the next drive, drive oh, Stroud the finding score. Deontay Spencer the on the screen for the nice gain and first down. And then that leads to Stroud hooking up face. with Wes Briscoe <laughs> in the back of the end zone from six yards out. Like Stroud finished 12 for 19 like with 150 yeah. yards and two touchdowns. The defense making plays as well. Terrence Cahee picking up where he left off with the interception there. And even the second string making plays. Leon Bluen, the fourth, breaking away for the 56-yard scamper and getting a nice block there from his teammate. An overall effective day for the Cowboys. It's At times, really good. At times, uh, not, you know, kind of uh, sloppy at times. We're going to wipe the video out of three minutes. You know, I thought both sides actually seconds, did some good things. Position? A lot of good things happened no. and a lot of bad Ten. things happened. You know, uh, that's why we're Ten. practicing in the spring. That's what it's all about, 15. you know, getting guys oh, five, some, uh, sorry, some experience and, and getting the young guys in and, and seeing who can play what position. Mike, you. And if you missed the Cowgirls victory last night, we have the highlights here for you. But early they were down 7-5, to five, but they answered back with the Caitlin Baggett 
layup, and we are all tied up at seven. And it was a back and forth game before the half. Caitlin missing the three pointer here, but Atlanta Verdant getting the basket and the foul. Yeah, it's like a, it by looks fine until people start moving in the at halftime. Mercer trying to stay in it, mm. but Caitlin Baggett was having none of it. First, she knocks That's down the three me. here and definitely unconscious. And then she's going to drive here and she's going to get the bucket and the foul. Caitlin finished with a career high 38 points as McNeese goes on to win 82 to 7, getting their first postseason victory in the history. The Cowgirls will next travel to Elon on Saturday to face the Lady Kings to the second round. Screen, the game will decide who moves on and to the second round. Tip-off is for one. And in baseball, McNeese State on the road today for their conference opener against Lamar. They come into the game 12 and 8, winning four of their last five. First pitch is set for a few minutes screen. from now at 6.30. And a high school baseball score we did not get to mention last night. St. Louis absolutely rolling Stand over by. Appaloosa 16 to nothing in five innings. The Saints will next host Kinder tomorrow in Northwestern State They're about to camp. tip off against Florida in the tournament. We'll see if they'll do some more bracket busting. Oh, you're going to have to do that. It's been a lot today, thing, but yeah. a little bit more. It's been a bad day for a lot of us. For a lot of us. Right. Your Coming cart, up next, your break, Cedric is back with one. another Tech of the Weather. And, and some been? local kids show off their dance moves as 70s and 6 continues. Killer Mike and Fane. Stuff that's disgusting now. 10. Send my son from scene. 5, 4, 3, 2, one, go see. Stand by. Mike Hume. The lunchroom at John F. Kennedy Elementary School became so a ballroom this afternoon. Videos Fifth up. graders at the school performed several We're dances mix. they've been learning for their Is parents that in banner? school. They are part of a ballroom dancing course We're where mix they receive banner lessons to a twice a attitude. week and they're preparing to perform oh, I think against the, other the schools banner's at the, the end of April. Girl. I don't the think students it's the all first agreed girl. it was intimidating at first, but they've grown to love the different Is the banner for the second girl? they say they're not too bad either. Son of two, I think it's the second. Yeah, it says Kaylee. Well, I feel like it's a great experience yeah. since we get to dance Good with our job, classmates producer. and enjoy time having, enjoy spending time with each other. Thank you. And the students have been dancing since January and have participated in 20 lessons. Their competition will be April 28th. One minute. Stand about on camera. Center. Good luck to them. Fancy there on cam. Tell you. Stand by 3D. Myself back in the day. I had a <laughs> back. A long time ago. <laughs> now, let's take a look here at your forecast. You're going to be heading out this evening. It's going to be warm. Watch those temperature trends. We're going to stay in the 70s for the most part. Solid dropping into the 60s by late this evening. Mostly cloudy skies. It's going to be warm. We're tracking a threat for a storm or two coming up on your Saturday. And then cooler heading into next week. The official spring break week. Temperatures in the 30s to start the day. So. Maybe not the perfect there spring break cam. Not beach weather, not, here. We not here. One for the right. one. All right. We'll be back here tonight at 10 for Nightcast or anytime Website's online 15. and on your mobile device, kplctv.com. Thanks Video's for up. joining us and have a great evening. 10. Five, four, three, two, one. Faye, take it. One girl was shaking it. <laughs> That's gonna be a dancer. Mm-hmm. Watch her. Bow down.